Yes, people, how's it going? Welcome back to Lily White Lane and welcome along to your match preview for Tottenham Hotspurs Clash this Saturday against Manchester United. And look, it's being called and labelled the El Sacchio over Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> what these two clubs have become. It's mad when you think about it. Three years ago, us and, um, us and the United, you know, fighting in the Champions League fight. But all oh, United still are in the Champions League, but really fighting for titles, top tier teams. And now you look at us. What a bloody joke. Anyway, enough of that. It still is a big game. It still is a big game at the Tottenham Hotspur stage and the toilet seat, as the rival fans seem to call it. And look, I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it for the simple fact it's the chance of a win against a really, really underperforming Manchester United team. But knowing our chances, they'll win and they'll all be singing Ollie's at the wheel at the end of the day. But I really do hope not. hope we're the ones singing Ollie's at the wheel. But our fans aren't creative enough to make up chances like this. But anyway, I digress. I am looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's a game that we can win. And I think it's a game that we should win. Right? I, I understand our form hasn't been brilliant. We had two wins. And then obviously coming off that loss against West Ham United. But as much as people say, you know, what's a cold, wet, rainy night in Burnley going to do? It's going to boost up your momentum. That's what it's going to bloody do. It's going to really, you know, give you that boost going into the next game. And we do have some confidence now. Although it's only the Carabao Cup or the Carling Cup or whatever you call it. We do have some confidence now going into the next game. And that does, you know, make me a lot more confident heading into um to the United game. So look... I do think that win definitely gives us some momentum and I do think, considering United's form, we can win. They've had no real game midweek to bounce back from, no real game to sort of sort themselves out and at least get a win and bring some confidence into the dressing room. Their last game was against Liverpool and how did that go? I'll tell you how it went if you've been living under a rock. Bloody well, not good. Bloody well, not, Bloody not good. It, it really didn't go good. 5-0 Liverpool got absolutely battered. Absolutely destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And I think, considering their form, we should win this game. I understand we've just come off a loss to West Ham, but we should win this game. Is Nuno's pressure? Is Nuno's pressure? <laughs> is Nuno under pressure heading into this game? I don't think as much as is being made out. We're not hearing anything about Enoch considering options for other people for the job. It's mainly just a fan base. Well, a lot of the fan base wanting Nuno to be sacked. But I don't think the club has any of that real feeling at all at the minute. We're not hearing anything like we are at United with Oli that Nuno could potentially be sacked. Meanwhile, with United at Oli, bloody hell, he's, Oli's at the wheel. Oh no, he's not at the wheel. He's bloody went off a cliff. It, it's all over the shop at United. You're hearing different reports every single day. Now you're hearing that he's going to um that he's going to stay with United. Uh, and they're going to give him a chance. And then before that, you're hearing they're going to immediately sack him from Romano out of all the journalists. So look, you, you just don't know with these things. But I think I think the pressure has been over-exaggerated on Twitter for Nuno. And I do think there is a lot more pressure on Ole Gunnar Shushina. O o Ole Gunnar Shushina this Sunday is under... Uh, Sunday? So used to playing on Sundays. This Saturday is so... It, 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 it's, the pressure's unreal because the United fans, they're not going to accept it. The way they react to it. Now, I understand we as Spurs fans think we get annoyed and do our Enoch out thing. And, and it's all well and good. But you should see the way these United fans react. On Twitter, you know, glazes out, glazes out, glazes out, Ollie out, Ollie out. And they have every right to. They have every right to. I mean, I'll only give a quick verdict on United because it's a Spurs channel. I'm not going to waffle on about Man United. But I think... I think Oli's had his chance now. He's had two years. I think he's been given the best players and he still hasn't got it done. He still hasn't got... I can't speak today. He still hasn't got the job done with, with, with some of the best players in the world and arguably the best, pay, the best paper squad. The best squad on paper this season. There we go. So, I, I, I do think he should be sacked. But I think... I think that's what adds the pressure to this game and what makes it interesting, what adds a very different dynamic to it, is that Oli knows that his job's on the line. Oli knows the reaction from the United fans, so he is going to be dying to win. But the question is, will the United players give it their all, or are they just fed up with Oli themselves? We don't know yet, but all I want our players to do is really step up, really step up and give it a go. As far as the line-up goes, 
It's not as simple as before. I think you go Hugo and go. No change in that. Although Galini was good midweek, Hugo and go. I think centre back partnership. I've, I've given him so many chances. Every single season. It happened at the start of last season. It's happening again now. Eric Dyer shows some promise. He shows some confidence. And then he throws it all out the window. Throws it all out the window uh, after a couple of weeks. And it's just. It's frustrating. Uh, really, really frustrating to see. So for me, you go Joe Rodon and Romero. You saw midweek how good a defender Romero really is. And how much he affects that back line. So look. Romero and um, and Rodon, then I'll go Tanganga at right back, Regulon at left back. I, I think we go with a 4-2-3-1. I honestly think that's the formation that suits us. We played it against Newcastle, we played it against um, Villa. We got six points out of those two games, six points out of a possible six points. And then we change it and then we get blown out of the water by by bubbles. <laughs> blown out of the water. Well, we get blown out of the water by West Ham. But look, I do think... In midfield, I think you go with Hoybier and Skip. I think that needs to be a partnership that comes back in. Because we haven't played it since those first three games. And those three games, our midfield looks so, so steady. So Hoybier and Skip. Um, Delhi doesn't get another game for Spurs in, in, in all honesty. I think you should a £5 million offer comes in in January. Take it. J -j just take it, Levy. Seriously, man. It's like, it's... Demi Ali, how many chances are we going to give this guy to step up? And you still people, uh, you still see people going, oh, he's got potential. We, he, he's still a good player. He's had two bloody years to prove it. Ever since he got him up, right, right. I know this probably means nothing. Coincidence potentially. Ever since he's got a mustache, he has been rubbish, utter rubbish. Since he got a mustache, it's like, oh, just don't get it. He, he's too bothered about messing out with his fancy hair. He's like he, he's like a rude fool. It. He's a fool. He, he's a fake rude hoolet with his stupid hair. Dude, I, I'm sick of Deli Ali. I think, I think he's missed his chance. Yes, he was a good player before, but he's nowhere near that now. He's he's too far up his own backside. And I honestly think when it comes to on the pitch, he hasn't been good enough. He's looked sloppy. He's looked slow. I just don't think he's good enough anymore to play for Spurs. So attacking midfielder, I think you go with, I think you go with Gio. I think, uh, uh, no, actually, actually I'll change that, scratch that. Tunky and Dombele, I still think he gets a shout in there. He hasn't been too bad this season, right? Tunky and Dombele, right wing, right wing. Stephen Berg finds a shout, but... I think we go with Hill. I honestly do think you go with Hill. He's come off the bench a few times. He's looked really, really promised. No, actually, no. No. I'm going to change it all. Keep Hill at right wing. Swap Tunky and Dombele for Mora. Play Mora in a more central role because he plays better there. Right, so skip Hoybier. Mora. Um, I'm losing track now. Mora, Hill, Sun and Kane. That's it. That's your team, I think. And, that, and look... Harry Kane, it's an annoying one. And this is why we need to buy a backup striker. Because who's going to step up when he's not playing well? Are we going to put that much pressure on a 17-year-old to step up and be the main man for Spurs? I don't think so. So I don't even enjoy saying Kane starts anymore because he don't deserve it. At Manchester United, at Liverpool, at, at, at City, at Chelsea. He, it don't matter about the calibre of your name. If you're not playing well enough, then you're not starting in the team. And he has been nowhere near good enough recently. But we don't have a backup striker who can come in to the team. And that's why in the transfer window, we're too focused on the future, that we didn't focus on the now and forgot our priorities. If you got our priorities wrong, didn't buy a backup striker when that was the... You, it's what we've been targeting all of January and the whole year. Didn't even go out and get that. So look, that's your team, that's your lot. Score prediction. It's a tough one. United are under a lot of pressure, but so so, so, we, so we. I don't think Nuno's getting sacked if we lose. I'm going to go for a boring, boring, boring nil-nil draw. A really, really boring cagey because both teams don't want to concede. Both managers don't want to get the older, the old sack. So look, it's it's boring, but there you go. I, I'm not expecting a, a three-all thriller or a four-all thriller, but it definitely could be that. So this game's either going to be a thriller. Or an absolute ball fest because both managers are going to be thinking right my job's on the line effort just go out there and give it your everything absolutely batter the opposition just 
all out attack, 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 attack. The Tottenham way, no. I, uh, both teams could do that, but with Nuno Espirito Santo as um as manager, I've said this before, my dog has more of a chance of talking. So I I, I, I highly doubt that Nuno is going to play an attack. Nuno and an attacking brand of football, which doesn't seem right. But anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure if you're new here to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button as hard as you possibly can, and tap that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching. And as always, come on you Spurs, Enoch out.